Hello, and welcome to our short infomercial on why you should evaluate information at all times or risk migraine, nausea, dizziness, and motor skill impairment. Just kidding, but we're going to talk about how the same way that you work hard to find the best and most authoritative evidence to back up your claims, you also need to shine that same light on all the information you find so you're making decisions based on the most reliable information. You might be familiar with the expression snake oil. Snake oil was sold in the American West in the 19th century as a miracle cure-all. Snake oil salesmen fooled people into buying this medicine for every possible ailment. Not only was it not actually medicine, it didn't even contain any snakes. People think of the web as a modern day wild west with its fad diets, Viagra deals, and Nigerian bank scams. Sometimes you'll run across sites that look all right, but really deserve a closer look. Maybe you know about the crap test or another checklist style tool that helps you evaluate websites by asking critical questions about who produced the information and what its purpose really is. How about this one? The Predatory Lending Association seems to be a trade organization for payday lenders to help them extract maximum profit from populations that are vulnerable to this kind of financing scheme. The working poor, military personnel, minorities. The reason I know about it is that my cousin created it as a political statement to shine a bright light on the unethical practices of this industry. The web is filled with complicated jokes, works of fiction, and political satire precisely because anyone can publish anything. Wikipedia is a great illustration. We all know that anyone can change any entry here at any time. Yet we also know that the information in Wikipedia is usually reliable for a quick lookup, and in fact, it has been shown to stack up against a print encyclopedia. So, we've warmed up with hoax websites and Wikipedia, which you probably were already aware of as good places to keep your critical thinking cap on. But there are actually lots of other snake oil salesmen out there in the wide world of information. Some of them have really clever disguises. For example, how do search engines decide which results to give you? When you do a search, are you missing information that could be relevant or could provide an alternative point of view simply because you never knew it existed? First of all, you see different results in a different order depending on which search engine you use. But did you know that different people see different results using the same search engine? This is the startling point that Eli Pariser makes in his famous TED talk on filter bubbles. So I do think this is a problem. And uh, I think if you take all of these filters together, if you take all of these algorithms, you get what I call a filter bubble. And your filter bubble is kind of your own personal, unique universe of information that you live in online. And what's in your filter bubble depends on who you are, and it depends on what you do. But the thing is that you don't decide what gets in. And more importantly, you don't actually see what gets edited out. Okay, maybe you are thinking that you can sidestep all these problems by sticking to academic sources that you find through the library. Certainly, you can avoid hoax websites, crowdsourced articles, and filtered searches this way. But you still need to think carefully about how and why the information you find was produced. Peer-reviewed articles are the gold standard of reliable information, right? Actually, it's a little more complicated than that. Peer-reviewed articles are often produced by faculty on the tenure track who have to publish or perish. If they don't get a certain number of publications out within a few years of their hire, they can lose their jobs. So there is a huge amount of pressure for people to get their research out there, even if it's flawed. What happens when a scholarly article is discredited or disproved after it's published? It gets retracted by the author or the publisher. Retraction Watch is a blog that follows this process in order to bring more attention to this side of the academic publishing world. What's really interesting is that many retracted papers get cited anyway, which implies that scholars and scientists aren't doing their homework and checking on the credibility of the works that they cite. 
and this problem seems to be getting worse over time. To give you one very famous example, the research linking childhood vaccines with autism has been retracted. Yet, many parents still have lingering doubts over the safety of vaccines. And it's not just that there are problems discovered with fabricated data, plagiarism, and other kinds of author errors. Sometimes publishers do unscrupulous things like failing to disclose that what seem to be scholarly journals are actually enormous advertisements entirely sponsored by companies with a stake in the outcome of the research. I hope that I've convinced you of the need to sharpen up your critical thinking skills anytime you find and use information. Thanks for listening.